Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. In today's episode, we chatted with Dana Willey, psychic medium, teacher, mentor, and co-host of two podcasts. We talk about her road to mediumship, and she has some great advice about expanding your awareness, and just a lot of great advice in general. She's cool as hell. I'm your host, Lauren Leon. And I'm her worst half. <laughs> we are a married couple learning how to develop our own intuition. This is episode 38 of Claire Voyaging. Wayfeather Media presents Claire Voyaging. Anyone there? <laughs> What's up, Hi. Voyagers? Hi, friends. How's it going? Um, Frank. Mm -hmm. Let's tell let's tell our friends some updates. Okay, first update is that this episode's long, so <laughs> we're gonna do a quick intro this time around. Yeah, that's it the won't first be a one. Twelve minute ep <laughs> episode intro this time. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, our Patreon is up and running, baby. It's Patreon time. Yeah. If you'd like to become a member, head on over to patreon.com slash clairvoyaging podcast and pay the low, low price of $4 per month. As we said last week, we'd like to create a space for this community and we'll be putting out exclusive content that includes episodes where we'll be chatting with one of our listeners per episode or maybe a couple per episode about their own journeys. It's a fun place where we feel like we're not alone as we continue to normalize our spiritual journey. So thanks in advance for joining us. And we can't wait to see you on Patreon. Yeah. And if you feel like you want to uh, talk to us or you have a story to share with us, let us know. Reach out. I feel like a lot of people are like, I'm just at the beginning of my journey. And yes. we're like, what does that mean? I want to know. Yeah. So I feel like other people would want to know, too. We've had a, a handful of people reach out lately and be like, oh, I just started doing this and I've been experiencing this. And we're like, that exactly. That's what we want to hear about. Yeah. So if you are just getting started, listen, it's if you feel not confident about it, you don't have to fill up a whole episode. If you just want to talk for five minutes, we'll talk for five minutes. You know, yeah. it's fine. It's this fine. Is, but let's chat about it. These can be mini episodes. We don't know. We'll we don't see know where where the wind takes us. Yeah. Where our sails lead oh yeah i did a lot of improv did you know that <laughs> yeah yep um <laughs> I was okay there. my second update and frank i just want you to see what it says it's just one sentence yeah <laughs> can you read that out loud it says our journal is basically in the dumpster <laughs> i have i'm so sorry i haven't given up hope yet can you believe the saga? We've just been talking about this alignment journal. It's so not aligned. Like, <laughs> what's happening? They messed up and they just won't and they, they won't reconcile. And it's not cool. So, yeah. And I'm, what we're going to be like $500 out for no reason just because they won't do the right thing. Yeah. Ooh, I want to say who it is, but I won't. <laughs> Love and light. Love and Love light. And light. <laughs> <laughs> so with that <laughs> thanks for being with us and we're gonna turn it over to this episode with dana willie dana willie big willie style <laughs> is that taken <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i don't see her like uh liking there's that. almost no way she likes that yeah, that's, that's okay i'm sorry dana we talked for a really long time with her, which is why this episode is is so long. And we just were like, can we just keep talking to you? Uh, I tried to cut it down, but it was tough. It was tough yeah. because it's just fun. She's really cool. She's just got a really, really nice vibe. Yeah. So we, we enjoyed it. And we know you will, too. So here we go. Big Willie style. Hearts and stars. Dana, thank you so much for joining us today. We love to hear people's like origin stories so how'd you get here i always i mean i don't know honestly <laughs> like i i always feel like like this medium life chose me i didn't choose it mm -hmm. i don't i did not like when i was a little girl go like you know what i want to do 
I want to talk to dead people. <laughs> like I did not like, I don't know how this happened. I was a little girl. I played with Barbies and like strawberry shortcake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did have some sensitivities. You know, you will talk to some mediums and they're like, oh, I saw I had a like ghost friend or whatever. I, I mean, I had like a spiritual awareness. There was like this one time that I sensed my great grandpa in a room like, but it wasn't like this, like, oh, my God, she's special. Right. Um, I did have um, I did lose my dad um, when I was 11. Oh, boy. Yeah. And um, when he just as he was about to pass, uh, we were on the way to the hospital to say goodbye to him. And I felt him say, leave. Wow. And I told my I was in the back of the car and I told my aunt and uncle, you don't have to rush. He's already gone. And they kind of looked back into the back seat, like, oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. and sure yeah. enough, it was exactly to the moment that he passed. Wow. And from that moment, he was just always with me. Mm. And so I just figured it was just, I just talked to my dead dad all the time. Like that just was standard. Like that was just part of my personality. Yeah. I mean, as it, as one does. And I just, I don't know. It just was kind of a thing. And then in 2016, I was inclined to see a medium for the very first time. And out of nowhere, like um, I, I think it had just been long enough. And he came through the medium and that was a really incredible experience. And it just kind of started to kick off a lot of like awareness. And it got to the point where I had a hard time going to the grocery store because I could feel everybody else's stuff going on. Oh, yeah. And I would have your dead grandma while I was picking out eggplants at the store. And it was just <laughs> like, it was too much. And I was like, what's going on? What is this? And that prompted me in 2016 to kind of go into this deep dive of reading every book I could get a hold of, every YouTuber, every like everything. And I started meditating and I'm like, what is this? And I was doing this all secretly, like in in my office <laughs> and to the point that like my best friend knew but nobody else did, not oh, even my wow. husband. Oh my gosh. And yeah, so it was just this like very like, what is going on with me? Why do why am I knowing things that they're going to happen before they happen? So in 2017, I came out of the closet to my husband and I was like, I think I'm psychic. And that's how I came out to him. Oh my God. And he's like, well, Dana, you know, that doesn't surprise me. You've been talking to your dead dad since the day I, I met you and like, cool. So he's like, <laughs> okay. Like, I've kind of known this about you. So I'm okay with it to this point. Yeah. And then I got to the point where I'm like, but am I making this up? Like, is this really real? And that prompted me to go to my first development circle. And because I needed somebody to validate, I needed some validation that I wasn't crazy. Yeah. And I kind of offered it up to the spirit world at that point of like, if this is real, cool, show me it's real. If not, then I can call myself crazy and be done with it. And I called my husband on the way back from that and said, holy shit, I'm actually like, not good at this, but like, there's something to this because yeah. I was making legit connections. I was making like accurate stuff. And I kept on going every other week, whenever they had the development circle and it became where I am now. I started working with the general public in 2019. And I, it literally came from like, I wonder what this is to I guess I should validate that this is actually something to, um, okay, maybe I should do this for the general public. And I started out just doing it for free. Yeah. And then I was like, mm, maybe I'll, cause people started wanting to give me money for it. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And so I would charge like five bucks. Oh my God. And then, um, and then it evolved into, then I was like, Oh, the dream of all dreams would be to work at this metaphysical store in my town. Like if I like if the biggest that I could ever dream would be to work at this metaphysical store. And I interviewed amongst a bunch of others and got the job. And I was like, oh my God, 
so like very quickly, like everything started happening. And so now I'm here and I'm reading professionally and I'm teaching and I have two podcasts. And so that's <laughs> like how? The, the origin story. Wow. That's yeah. A good one. And how do you feel about all of it now? You know, there was actually something pretty profound. You know, I said this mediumship life, I didn't choose this mediumship life, this mediumship life to- chose me. And I feel like there is a certain pull for certain people, right? Like there's, I, I believe everybody has the ability to learn to be a medium, to have mm-hmm. this connection. But I feel there is a certain few that have this, like, the, it, this was just always going to be meant for you. Mm. But about a, it was actually two years ago. I remember this. Um, I sat in meditation and spirit told me, yeah, this life chose you, but when are you going to choose it? Mm. And it was a pretty profound moment of like, I do have to actually like own that this is who I am and stop running away from it and like fully embrace it. Like this step into your power and like, yeah, Yeah. own it. They really told you. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Dana. <laughs> How much mm-hmm. did you, what were you doing before this? What were you said? You were in your office when you started let you practicing secret, secret yeah. reading. So um, I started, I got a college degree in psychology. I mean, the signs were all here yeah. that I was meant yeah. to do this work, <laughs> <pretty> right? <laughs> like the signs have all been pointing in this direction. Um, so my degree is actually in psychology because I wanted to, to help people. I mm-hmm. wanted to be a helper. And what's funny, I'm just going to veer off for a quick second, is I talked to my college roommate um, of my freshman year yesterday And I haven't, we've talked since I came out of the mediumship closet, but we haven't talked a lot. Like we haven't actually been on the phone for two years. And she's like, how is this mediumship thing going for you? And I was like, I don't know. I just like, this came out of nowhere. Um, I can't believe this is where I am. And she's like, I always knew this about you. Hmm. I always like could feel this in you. Like you always had this like very spiritual connection. And like, you were always like the person people felt really comfortable going to. It was just interesting. Like, yeah, because I'm starting with my college thing. But I started uh, with a BA in psychology. I got to my senior year of college and said, you know, the only way I'm going to do anything with this is to go get a master's or a PhD. And I don't want to go to school anymore. I'm really sick of school. Yeah. And um, they, I don't like to dox what I do in my day to day, but um, I, I, I was like, I'm going to get a different job. And so I have been doing what I'm currently doing for almost 27 years um, as a, it's a family business that I got pulled into and um, have been doing that for 27 years. Wow. Very, what I call my 3D job. Um, So I essentially do mediumship full-time and I have a very 3D job. And balance is really difficult. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. But, but there are some pluses. And I think that it has allowed me not to put financial pressure on my spiritual connection. And it has been a real important part of this for me. Um, Would the dream be to eventually just do the mediumship and not have anything? Yes. And I'm moving towards that. Um, My current career understands that they know that. um, And I've been in the process of that for a long time, but I don't have to, str- I don't have to put financial pressure on my mediumship or on my spiritual business. That's cool. And that yeah. has been really amazing. Um, there's other, there's uh, Jonathan Lewis. I don't know if you guys know who he is, no. but he's, he has a carpentry business <laughs> okay. um, and he's also a medium. So I don't, I feel like sometimes there's this pressure of like, okay, I'm choosing to be a medium and this is the thing that I'm choosing. And so I, this is all I'm going to do. And when you put financial pressure on all of that, and then you're, then you're like hustling to book readings and you're hustling to do this. It changes the dynamic of like, why were you ever driven to do this? 
Also, you're a manifesting generator. I know you told me that in your yes, TikTok. She's a manifesting generator, which if you don't know human design, look up yours. It's fascinating. But w- Frank and I both are. And we are multi-passionates. Oh. Like we have a lot of different interests and you don't have to. We're not like one thing is our thing for the rest of our lives, you know? Um, so that that makes sense. Too. Not only that, but like 100%, like as artists ourselves and, and people who have done a lot of work, non-traditional work, like same thing. I've always realized that, you know, when we played in a band for a while, it was like, we got to make this work because time's running out. And it like adds a pressure to the mm-hmm. to the artistry that makes the artistry more forced and no longer flow state kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I can only imagine is such a big part of developing spiritually. So much. And it has to be there. Like it's very easy to get burnt out sometimes in in the reading space because you're swimming in a lot of grief and a lot of, and when that feels like a have to, but I find like the flow state, I mean, it's important for, for that, but I have found the flow state to be really important um, in the teaching arena of not teaching things because I feel like it's, I have to, or it's a set curriculum. Um, I teach with my, my business partner and um, fellow medium, Matthew Tao, and everything for us has to be because it's fun, mm-hmm. because it lights us up, because it makes mm-hmm. us feel excited. Yeah. Um, whenever it feels like a have to in our space, we change up our curriculum and what we teach. That's great. Um, because remaining in the flow state, um, you know, there are certain things that I think we could teach and make tons of money because we're teaching it because there's a demand or, you know, there's uh, the algorithm tells you that these are really high searchable topics, but we would get where we get burnt out burning or teaching the same thing over and over again, or, you know, I don't want to teach this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really following like, what's my heart telling me to do right now? What, what is spirit guiding me to do right now? And so I, I can't ever imagine myself being like this one trick pony that like, I'm going to do X amount of readings today because I have to do at this to pay my bills. I think at the end of the day, if you follow your passion and if you do what really lights you up inside, the money's going to be there. The support's going to be there. But when we put pressure on it, like I have to do this to pay the bills, it's, it, there's tension there. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's that's where the flow yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. It sucks all the fun out of it. It's it, it just on the same, in the same vein, um, Frank and I like, even just with this podcast, there were at some point was this almost not expectation, but feeling like, the th- is this the thing is this the next thing or whatever and then hold on for for some <laughs> uh background information lauren and i are in a, a glorious transition period <laughs> and, uh spiritually and financially so and this podcast came about around the same time as a lot of those you know 3d job transitions so it was like oh like do we how hard do we lean into this and like 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 Lauren is saying now, like how much do we try and make this the thing? And according to human design recently, which we've both leaned into without sounding like the biggest advocates ever. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know enough to like advocate hard for it, but I have learned quite a bit from it. It's just interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Forcing things too much tend to not work out or yeah. it, it adds, adds so much extra stress that it, the thing that we thought we wanted to do becomes less fun. So we Mm -hmm. have been able to like isolate this, just having these conversations once a week or twice a week with people like you is kind of awesome, regardless of like the, the financial outcome. So we've kind of let that go. We are receiving a tremendous amount of support. People like it. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. And our families like it and stuff too. And that's, (laughs) that's fantastic. But yeah, in the meantime, like, you know, there's a probably going to be a need for a 3d job at some point. (laughs) But maybe not. And it, And as you're spiritually developing and working through that part of you, this is the most spiritual thing that you can be doing. Yeah. Yeah. When we work on following our joy in our day-to-day life and how we're interacting with our, our, 
career. You know, we don't have to have a spiritual career to be spiritual, but are we doing things in our day to day life that bring us joy, that fulfill us? And I, you know, talking to a lot of dead people, um, you kind of start to realize like what's really important at the end of the day and how much have tos can we take off of our plate? And yeah, I don't know. Being a medium and and going through my psychic and spiritual and mediumistic development has taught me far more about life and far more about me mm. than it has about my how to connect to the, to the other world. Right? It's I've learned so much more about me. Yeah, it's the, been the best therapy I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I am a. Um, <laughs> personally on a completely different path than I was when we first started having these conversations regularly. Boy, oh boy, I was steady and stable. <laughs> <laughs> so you think. So I thought <laughs> that all said, like it felt very stable at the time. But then when you start digging into that trauma, things get a little loosey goosey. But it's so interesting because we keep, you know, in talking to people like you and finding that the through line is healing and like working through <laughs> your shit and all that stuff just that alone has kind of like moved moved us along as well yeah hold yeah. on so let me ask you in talking to the amount of dead people that you talk to and and having that help you put things into perspective what's the big takeaway that you say if there can be like in the venn diagram of all the conversations you've had with the uh pass on people what's what's the important stuff the biggest thing is like um create memories, not things like mm. the, the importance that we put on like having things is so tiny. Yeah. Um, the amount of times that they come through and they say like, I don't care what you did with such and such heirloom, or I don't care what you did with this. Like I'm not attached to that. I'm attached. Like they always come through with memories and they always you know, and there's so much heartfelt and so much connection to like how we felt creating this memory. So it's it's about creating memories and not having things. Um, it's also how long we stay in things that we don't have to stay in. <laughs> Ooh, oof, we, oof, you yeah. Know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I don't know how much you guys have or if you've ever heard of the concept of having a life review or anything like that. I think yeah. there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different religious takes on it or, or whatever, but you know, if we were looking at it from the lens of maybe a Christian view, we would think about it as like, you're being judged by somebody. Right. Like, you did this wrong and look how you did this wrong. But the life review, the way that I've experienced it or, or been told about it from the other side is, yeah, certainly there are parts where you are going to have to experience how you affected other people. And that can probably feel good in a lot of ways, but also, you know, you're going to have to understand how you affected other people. Mm -hmm. But the thing that has been imparted to me that is so freaking gorgeous is it's not how many times you fall down, it's how you got up. Oh, and yeah. it's about learning that we are here on earth school to learn, to grow. And it's not about beating ourselves up for the mistakes that we made, but how we grew from them. Ooh, yeah. And that was so transformational for me and my way of thinking, because I talk about personal development am the worst critic of myself. Right. Of like, I don't need a life review because believe me, like every day I'm like, <laughs> oh, you did this what wrong and you did this wrong and you did this wrong and you did this wrong. Right. And six years ago, like, you did this wrong. And yeah. <laughs> and it's three in the morning. Oh. And why am I doing this right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make sure you do this tomorrow so you don't screw that up. Yeah, yeah no, yes. yeah. 100%. But when you look at the trajectory of everything of like, but look at, you, you know, you can do this on your Facebook memories of like, look at where I was in 2013 and look at who I am now. Was there growth? And there's a bigger emphasis on that from the spirit world of like, did you grow? Yeah, you had a really hard time here, but did you, what did you do with that difficult time? Did you grow from it? And there's a bigger emphasis on difficult times happen, but do they happen to us or for us? And we can take difficult times and help them and it can help push us 
forward. Oh, that's it's so kind of beautiful. It's kind of a way of like gamifying challenges even like it makes mm-hmm. it like, Oh, something, something unexpected and not up front. Great happened to me just now. And this could be fun. This is where the, this is where the fun starts. Um, you know, oh, yeah. sometimes, sometimes. I don't run away from any, I mean, yeah. I, that's, that's uh, not that I don't, I, my balls aren't that big, but <laughs> I don't, I try not to run away from anything anymore. I, I, I make it very well known that I, I, I suffer with mental health disorders. Um, but I, one of the big things was like an anxiety disorder, um, that I suffered with. And, um, it was, I used to run away from anxiety attacks. I used to run away from my depression. I used to run away from everything. And one of the biggest things that I learned was don't run away from it. Like sit in it when you're feeling really horrible, don't run away from that, but experience it, feel it, use it to move through it. So you don't have to feel it anymore, but also learn from it so you can grow from it. And it was, that was when I got better. That was when, you know, like I'd been in therapy and I was doing therapy and I was on meds and I was doing all of that. But that mindset is when I was like, oh, (laughs) when I stopped running away from it and just like, I'm going to sit in it and it's going to feel like shit. Yeah. But I'm going to, I'm going to grow. And that works. I should have asked if I could cuss, but here I am. No, no, go for it. (laughs) Sorry (laughs) about it. No way. way. (laughs) They're all about it. I have formerly a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. And I say formally only because I started taking Prozac. And mm-hmm. it's funny because I've wondered since, cause now we've been talking about being more our authentic selves and all that stuff. And I'm, I feel better, but also I'm, I'm, I'm popping 20 milligrams every day. So I'm wondering if now's the time to try. <laughs> I'm so scared. It was ruining my life. Uh, my life was mm-hmm. in shambles. I was about to, cause we like being creative, but we were in the middle of making like a bunch of um, short films and stuff. And I was on set one day during our, our most recent short film called remixed. And Oh my God, I was falling apart. I yeah. was like, Oh, and, and I had to like go excuse myself. And I would I'd take a, a swig of, this is pre Prozac a swig of whiskey or whatever, just to survive mm-hmm. and get through the the day. And I was like, this is something that I was looking forward to so much and I'm so excited about, but I'm sitting here having the worst time of my life. And I also don't want this to be over. What, what kind of contradiction am I living into right now? Yeah. So that was tough. it was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, the, 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 that's the thing that got me to like really start paying attention to my own mental health um, more is because I was like, and I was pregnant. Yeah you, yeah, you were. <laughs> we were about to have our second baby. And he was like, I got to get my shit together. And I was like, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but congrats on doing that because, but that's a perfect example of, of understanding like something's not right. Yeah. I'm going to use this and do something with it and not let it win. Right. Yeah. Right. And you leaned into it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about to be six years sober here in September oh, and, oh gosh, I was self-medicating like, uh, like, oh, that was, that was my, my <laughs> jam. You want to self-medicate? Let's, let's get down. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think that a lot of us numb yeah. and I yeah. think a lot of us is like, what do we need to do to get through the day? Yeah. What do we need to do to not to shut down the brain at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. And then it gets to be more and often and and that can be that can be a problem. So, you know, the fact that you were noticing like I have to numb, you know, like that, that's huge. And yeah. you are doing the self-work. I I am such a proponent of psych meds, like such a proponent. And I think I always think about psych meds as putting um tread on the tires. So that you could actually do the self work that you needed to do. Oh, I like, like that. that gave oh, yeah. you the space that you needed to do the self work that you needed to do. Look yeah. at the psychology major. Oh, right. Bringing I forgot. In, <laughs> bringing in the big guns over here. <laughs> yeah. And so because of that, I've been wondering, I'm like, I wonder if I should start like weaning off. And now that I'm more aware of what's going on, weaning off and feeling that feeling again and then seeing where it takes me but i also am so horrified because you know if it starts to be come overwhelming again it's it's a long process to get back to normal so yep 
I, I and the reason I got myself to even be okay with meds in the first place is because the thing how much worse could it get at this point? Like I'm not enjoying something I enjoy. Um so it was like I'm I'm gonna treat myself like a beaker, a science <laughs> experiment until I find what works and then from there move on. But again, some doing, people are on are on medication their entire lives or like mm-hmm. you know, a good majority of it. Yeah. And that's, and that's fine. fine. <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, you know, I've always wondered if I was masking, if I've been using Prozac as a mask or if it's something that I actually like genuinely need. So, um, could be a fun experiment. Yeah. Everybody's so different. <laughs> everybody's so different. And there are people like, like you said, that need it their whole life. Mm-hmm. And, and I think everybody's, that's what, why we lean on doctors and, um, and that, and, and, for good ones. It's hard to find good doctors yeah. sometimes, but um, it's, it's an interesting thing to navigate. And I, I think also, you know, I just, I feel like it's always important to mention this. If we're going to talk about a healing journey, we're always healing. I don't think we're ever done healing. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, you know, we're like, I know exactly who I am. <laughs> done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, no, I think we're we're always kind of revisit or there's there's other things that are going to happen in life. And that's the thing that people don't, you know, I get a lot of people that are like, life is being really hard on me. Life is going to be hard on you. It's not a question of if life is going to be hard. It's when life is going to be hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's how we're going to react to it. Do we have tools in our tool belt to handle it? And sometimes Prozac can be a tool in your tool belt. To it is for now. It. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe once the kids move out. <laughs> <laughs> There's six and True. two. So <laughs> <laughs> also, it's just yeah, it's just, pretty. Well, the, the Jean, it's a busy time. Jean right should now. get a job. It's fine. <laughs> she can wash dishes or something. <laughs> She's so bad at washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the life of being a journey, of course, like it's a shifting goalpost. You know what I mean? Like you're always going to have to like evolve yourself. And I always say people who, who act like they have it figured out. That's an Instagram lie. You know, that's a mm-hmm. yeah. that's a false front. And they're probably doing themselves a disservice at some point, too, if they believe their own shit. <laughs> but. I, just shifting a little bit. Is there a big difference in your psychic knowing? Um, like, do you do psychic readings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they kind of my my. So I guess what I would say is like my first off, everybody has this ability. Um, I do think that some people just have a higher aptitude for it. And Mm I, um, you know, I can look back now and be like, oh, it was there and it was there and it was there my entire life. Yeah. Um, You know, to the to the tune of like literally again, I was talking to my dead dad the whole time. Um, I just had this, um, and, and then it was like, cool to like talk to my, my college roommate. And she's like, yeah, the whole time, Dana, the whole time. Um, we just aren't picking up the soft and subtle things. I think we see a lot of things on TV and the movies and, you know, whatever, even maybe on social media or TikTok, where it's like, that's what mediumship is. But you have this perception that the medium is having this very profound and like very loud experience. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, we, we become very sensitive to the soft and subtle shifts of, of the way that the spirit communicator is coming through. And sometimes we might get a visual, but that, that visuals for half a second, you know, we're not getting, you know, if we're getting a little shift in the atmosphere, it's very soft and subtle, but we've become very sensitive so that we notice that a little bit more. Um, So for me, you know, psychism is the first part. It's the way a medium connects to the spirit world. So we use uh, our, we see, we feel, we know, we hear, we taste. We use all of those extra sensory perceptions to get information. So we can do that to tell somebody their future, their present, their past, get information about an item. So if you were holding a bracelet, I could maybe get you information on that item. I could do remote viewing. Um, I can get information from a loved one in spirit. So that is a psychic ability to be able to connect with a loved one in spirit in a way. So we use our, our the same clairs to connect to the medium 
to mediumship. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That so, makes sense. yeah. So it's just where we point our perception. So I always think of psychism as this larger umbrella that Reiki um, lives under that, you know, tarot and mediumship and all of that. So, you know, the grand thing of all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics want to be mediums. Anybody can. Yeah. Anybody. I want to just anybody can. Right. <laughs> it's just should they choose. It's yeah. where we point our perception. And so if my perception is to shift my awareness to that space, that's where that goes. So the information for me when I'm doing like a psychic reading. So let's say I'm focusing on giving you a psychic reading, Lauren, like I'm all of the energy is to your energetic field. That's where it's, if you would think of a target, your energetic aura Mm -hmm. is kind of where I'm pulling that information from. It's almost like all of the information kind of comes in to the front for me. Mm -hmm. Um, If I was connecting with one of your loved ones in spirit that they typically kind of, um, it comes in more as a feeling. I would say feeling is the number one way we perceive the spirit world. It the energy of the room shifts a little bit. It has a thicker feeling to it. Um, I'm going to feel more. I'm going to feel a building. Um, but I typically get information. I feel like uh, loved ones in the spirit world kind of connect to me on the sides of my body and in the back. Oh, interesting. And so I kind of will feel like things about somebody psychically will come in here and then my mediumship will kind of come in over here. Now everybody's different. So if you guys are hearing this and you're like, that's not how my mediumship works. That's okay. Everybody's going to connect differently. That's how I connect. You said when your um, abilities started picking up a little bit more that you were having a hard time, uh, like going to the grocery store, protecting yourself from Mm -hmm. other people's energies and, and stuff like that. What was, what, how did you overcome that? Um, I actually, how are you, how are you overcoming that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it was, it was actually something I had to teach myself. Um, I, I was meditating a lot, um, kind of to back it up for a second. Um, I, there are so many amazing mediums out there that were able to get like really amazing education earlier on, um, in when they started, I know you had Megan and Lisa on earlier. Yes. Um, yes, she's awesome. um, and she's like, I just walked in and Mike, May- Michael Mayo was there like, oh. like <laughs> I did not have, that was not my development experience at all. I wish really? it was, I yeah. wish I would have walked into a metaphysical store and had Michael Mayo like, <laughs> right in front of me. We had that him on too. He's it. amazing. <laughs> no, I, we love Michael, but that was not my experience at all. I had, um, limited funds. Like I was broke as a joke. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, I was just reading books or whatever. I remember development or a mediumship class. And I was like, it was the day of, and I had to pay that day and I didn't have enough money in the bank account to pay for that class that day. But it was the best thing that ever, I was devastated that day, but it was the best thing that ever happened because I wouldn't have gotten the proper education that day from that teacher. Uh Oh, so Oh, it was like a what scam happened? or something or what was it? There's just good teachers out there and there's not good okay. teachers out there. Yeah. And, you know, not everybody's meant to teach. And there's a lot of people who regurgitate um, information out there because they read it in a book. And so they're just going to regurgitate or they learn from somebody else, but they don't really understand how it all works. And they just regurgitate what somebody else said to them. Oh, yeah. Or they don't fully understand the mechanics of it. And this was she wasn't even a good medium herself. Did so you find I, that out you know, after the fact? Like, oh, that yeah. I heard that she's yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw her actually work afterwards and I was like, oh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And so it actually worked out for my benefit. So I was building through just meditating, I was building my own relationship with my guides. And it was through sitting. Uh, for spirit, um, just sitting with spirit that my development was going on the most. And that was the most powerful thing for me. I was creating a relationship with my guides. They were becoming my greatest teachers. Oh, that's cool. And so when I had a question, um, my, my, my friend, Matt would just ask his, you know, he had amazing mentors. Um, 
that he could just like ask and say like, I'm having this issue. What should I do? I didn't have that. I would just sit in meditation and sit and go to my spirit team of like, I feel overwhelmed in public. What do I do? And they, they told me to create a waiting room. I was like, okay. So I created like a mental waiting room in my head of like, I'm not open. I have a boundary. You all need to go in my waiting room. Oh, wow. And so I literally like visualized Beetlejuice's waiting room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the like weirdest thing you could <laughs> imagine, which <Yeah>. is great. <laughs> yeah. But but I I was like, but it gave me something like visual to like be like, I'm not doing this right now. And so they they taught me to bring in mindfulness into it. When I feel like I'm overwhelmed by everybody's stuff, mindfulness for me. What does my breath feel like? What do my feet feel like against the floor? What do I smelling? What am I doing? Because I'm just shifting my awareness out to everybody else or to the spirit world. It's yeah. not them bugging me. It's me shifting my awareness. So as soon as I figured out that I could control <laughs> my own energy and that what anybody else around me was feeling or experiencing was none of my business and I was no longer curious or open my energy wasn't open and I wasn't this huge sponge. And I would, I practice like energetic bubbles and just being like, I, I am like this energetic bubble. Nobody gets to come into my energy and I practice things like that. But that all came from spirit. Like I asked them for tools and they were like, do this, do that, do this, do that. And what was really cool was when I actually could start to afford some education, like proper they were just re reintegrating or saying in a different way or saying in the same way, what my guides were already telling me. And so it was extremely wow. validating. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. I got that cool. already. Thank you. <laughs> that is but cool. it was really cool. That's so it's, it's inspiring that like you took, you had the patience to do that on your own because I mean, you know, if a lot of people, like you said, like they're, if they're going for going straight to their mentor, then that's kind of a quick answer or help me and, and to have mm -hmm. the patience to sit in that and like literally just ask spirit is that's cool. Good job. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I was I don't 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 applaud me too much. I was pissed off <laughs> no, no, no. OK, I still want to I, I was still like, want to give you a little trophy. I wasn't like some Zen monk during this, like going like, thank you. For the I was like, okay. why can't I afford proper education? Like I was pretty pissed off. It's, it's only recently where I was like, thank you. OK, I understand now. I also like, you know, I, I said I didn't want to like I didn't choose mediumship. I also didn't choose to like teach like teaching also chose me. And I also know now that I'm the great teacher that I am because I learned the way that I did. Yeah. And I'm able to, I'm not regurgitating something that somebody else said because I'm truly teaching from my own experience, from the spirit world, the lessons they taught me. Um, and that's been really cool. And even to the point um, in, our, in our school, we really talk about like, when we sit in the power, when we sit for spirit, let them teach you, you know, we are just your guides along the way. And yes, when you have a question, you can ask, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll, help, I'll be there to support you and, and be there for you. Um, but at the end of the day, does it feel right to you? And we, we try to empower our students with discernment of just because I say it, does it feel true to you when I say it? And I'm just the guide. The spirit world is your teacher. And I'm just your guide along the way. I'm just a few steps along further in the journey than you. Um, and I can help you along with exercises and tools to get you there. And it's not putting myself as, because I feel like sometimes, especially if you're coming from religious trauma, I feel like you can feel like your mentor or teacher is the gateway to spirit when it's really about you becoming that relationship 
with you spiritualizing yourself, you understanding that relationship between you and the spirit world is the most important thing in your development. I've gotten the impression. That's a great difference. Yeah. I've gotten the impression from all the people that we've spoken to that there's no right way to do this. And it seems like your um, approach to it is kind of meeting people where they are and what, where, what they have naturally felt and like pushing that a little bit forward. Um, that's actually one of our things on our website is like, we meet every student where they are and oh. we, 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 we call it your special spice. So <laughs> it's really cool because, um, I'm a feeler, like everything for me is very heartfelt. I feel everything. I feel, um, I'm very clairsentient. That's really, I'm, that's like probably my greatest and or biggest connection. Um, Matt, who, um, I teach with is an incredible clairvoyant. He can draw with amazing accuracy, the spirit loved one and, and present them. Um, so to compare ourselves and say, I'm not a good medium because I can't draw the spirit loved one or bring to life the images of the spirit loved one, like Matt would be to undercut the beautiful mediumship that I do, or conversely for him to say, um, I'm not a good medium because I don't bring the the sensitive or the the feeling that Dana does in her readings. That that's not right. We all have a unique and beautiful voice that we're meant to do this work. We have a pull to do this work for some freaking reason. Who knows why <laughs> we were pulled to do this work? Right. But I may not be the medium for you, but somebody else is, and that's why I also don't believe in competition. Um, either as mediums, because if I'm not the medium for you, somebody else's, there's plenty of dead people out there. Like there is no <laughs> shortage of dead people. Yeah. Um, so like, I don't believe in competition. I think that there's amazing mediums out there. There's other people that maybe aren't so amazing, but there are incredible mediums out there. If I'm not the medium for you, I have recommendations for other people that are I equally amazing that I would recommend you to. Same thing with teachers. Like, we we don't tell you like you can only learn from us. We're going to recommend that you learn from a variety of different teachers, but we're also going to empower you with the information of like, this is the right place for me to learn. This is the wrong place because this doesn't feel safe because I did tell you, like, I didn't take that class from that one place, but I fell into some places where I got some bad education no. oh. and that will make you lose some some time in your development in stepping into the wrong development spaces. So is it bad strategies or is it just bad advice? Is it like just the wrong approach? It can be so many things. I mean, some people aren't meant to teach. I mean, there's, there's that, um, there can be people that are teaching before they're ready to teach. They just don't know. So they're regurgitating. They don't understand what they're, what they're really doing yet. Um, there can be people doing it for the wrong reasons, for nefarious reasons. Um, I've been in, I was in one situation where I thought it was a safe place. And then the person who was running it started to make a little mini cult during it and started oh, to create boy. fear in this space. Yeah. <laughs> oh spiritual communities and spiritual spaces are a little wonky. You got to so be you really have sure. To be like, yeah. You got to have your ego in check because at any point when people are giving you their trust, you can take advantage of it in a huge way. And people do. Yeah. Which is why I am now charging $20 a month (laughs) for one-on-one access to my new cult. Meet me at the river (laughs) and we will. (laughs) For real though. I'm not kidding. Like and the people that got sucked in. We're not. I was like, you know, better than that, but they got sucked in and it's, like it's there's sad. a real deal or like ugh. Mm-hmm. yuck mm. wow that's that is scary so it happens. <laughs> that's fascinating yeah. it happens and you know i think there's this part of us that all want to believe and i think that's amazing but having grounded skepticism even in people that we really really trust that seem really really amazing to us of like just we have to always have our discernment yeah, and have grounded skepticism and just keeping an eye out for egotistical people or like self-important seems to be like the best mm-hmm. strategy for identifying uh, the losers. Yeah. <laughs> I, people can do some like serious damage too. like, we, we did this episode called what's your thing. We, we went to Venice oh, beach yeah. and we started 
just asking people like, do you have a second to talk about intuitive things? But we talked to this one woman who she's like, I have, I'm kind of scared of like psychics because someone just like came up to her when she, I forget where she was. She was in like a different country and someone just approached her and was like, you're going to die when you're 50. And she's like 10 years away from that. And it's just kind of like this thing in her head that she's so scared of. And she's like, Oh, it's kind of, I have to talk to my therapist about it. And we were like, we don't believe that that person was being <laughs> true, <laughs> which kind of helped. We were like, talk to someone else just to at least feel a little bit better. But the psychic cleanup is real. Oh yeah, like, I bet. Like that story doesn't even like shock doesn't me. Doesn't phase you. <sighs> yeah. Oh, no, because the, the, the war stories that I could tell you of things that people were told, the, the, the things that people were told, like, if I don't give you this much money to do this spell, oh. blah, blah, blah is going to happen. I mean, people get taken advantage of, and especially with mediumship, um, you know, there's the the love spells and there's different things and whatever, because people want love. But when it's somebody that you love and you were in the deepest, darkest grief of your life, like the things that I've heard make me sick oh like gosh, make yeah. me sick and it, there have been so many times where I've had to do cleanup readings where these people come to you broken and <sighs> devastated because of what somebody else has said to them and they've been walking around for years thinking that their loved one is stuck and hates them and won't come and talk to them and because they hate them because a medium said it was their the medium's excuse for them not to come forward is that they're mad at you and they don't like you or blah, blah, oh my blah. god and so and so they carried that around for whatever i had one where the medium said they're at a lower vibration because they have a lot of regrets from their life so they won't come forward and talk to you Ew. and so 2 years later um, she booked a reading with me and in two seconds, I was like, boom, 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 boom. And she's like, did he get through everything? Like all the regrets. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, this is what this medium said to me. And I was like, oh no, honey. No, 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 no. Like what she told you was absolute crap. And so this poor woman had to go through all that time, like worried about her loved one on the other side. And we don't see, we can't see or know like fully what's going on over there. Yeah. So to walk around when you're already in your deepest grief and be controlled by fear and be controlled by misinformation like that. I can't, like, I, I can't tell you how many times. That's devastating. What's to just like hold people? on to that and feel like, like you're carrying around some guilt for some false tr thing. Like that's, not mm -hmm. even oh for two years i mean thank god she actually came to you yeah. and you did this yeah. the cleanup as you call cleanup it cleanup readings but what a nightmare uh, yeah why, what's what's the point like that people that yeah. person didn't get anything out of it i don't, I don't understand um well a lot of mediums uh, underdeveloped or whatever will make excuses for why they weren't able to connect as well. Um, so, you know, <laughs> they blame I the get him. spirit. <laughs> Listen. Um, or, you know, I can't really connect with lower vibrational spirits as well. Cause I'm so high vibe. Right, right. Like, oh. they'll, they'll say things like that. I can't connect with your loved one. Cause they've already reincarnated. Um, they're so busy right now doing something else. Um, they couldn't come and talk to you today is, is oh another one. Um, oh, I've heard it all. I've heard it all. Um, so these are red flags, guys. Yeah. You know, I think <laughs> to, to anybody who's seeking out mediumship uh, readings, use your discernment. Also, like if they're not making a, a connection for you, what's their refund policy? You know, I, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 Just like anything, we should be having refund policies if we're not making connections. Dude, and, for sure. This is this is a psychic erectile dysfunction, and, <laughs> and, and 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 there's no blue pill for this. There's though, no I'm pill sorry. For this. 
I have a question that like I haven't asked anyone yet. Do you know if like, let's say if I died and I am I still Lauren and do I remember as a spirit past lives? Mm -hmm. So, okay, Sorry, this is my a, understanding. <laughs> tell me it's, all of it. <laughs> so hard to like grasp it. And here's the one thing I want to just tell people before I jump into this. It's really hard as humans to put everything in a box with spiritual concepts that are very complex. Yeah. So the, the less that we can try to black and white think the afterlife and these spiritual concepts, that's going to relax everything for everybody. So, you know, try not to like think of everything as black and white or this or that in the spirit world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that just makes, that just makes, that makes it easier right? because um, could they have reincarnated? Yes. But is there still part of their soul on the other side? Yes. So it's not that, that simple. We think a lot of us think that our, we're just fully like, you just feel like you're just fully Lauren. There's a hundred percent of your soul is here present in this world right now. However, just a small bit of your soul is here right now. Mm -hmm. And there's like what I think of as your higher self. We've all kind of heard that term of higher self. Yeah. But to me, that's that's like our greater soul or, or a higher soul or like the, the connection to our higher self or whatever. And from that higher self, maybe there's Lauren's um, incarnation going on right now. Maybe you have concurrent incarnations going on that's connected to that same Ooh. soul, if you will. Okay. Right. Or there's past lives or incarnations yeah. that were that are connected to this experience or whatever, but it's still part of that same consciousness of the soul of Lauren. So maybe you only have like five to ten percent of Lauren soul, like in you That's, right now. I mean, that makes sense. No, that, no, my, that makes my sense. My skittle brain. No, that, that's, <laughs> it's only a that's what doesn't make sense. I knew that's where you're going to go with that. <laughs> so when you're connecting to the spirit, there is that consciousness that is connected, that soul, the over soul, the, that is part of your soul is still connected to like Frank. If I, if, let's say you passed on, God forbid, right? Passed on. And you return back to that where from whence you came, that soul that is you, and you wanted to come through to him, you would be have awareness of not only your life with Frank and everything that you could bring forward to validate everything about your life together. That soul love would that soul connection that the two of you have, that soul to soul connection would still be there. But you, as part of the one that is you, would have awareness of all of your past lives anything else that's going on all of that okay so our our uh intuitive psychic therapist told me at one point that like there is it because we did like a past life thing yeah he said that there is he feels like there was a piece of there's still a piece of me in some of those past lives so to 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 dana's point like with concurrent existences <laughs> Um, I don't get that. That's fine. Okay, I don't the, have to. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, this is a, a soft plug for for our new podcast. You with, can hard plug. You know Megan Elise. Okay, cool. With Megan Elisa, which you guys know. Yes. Um, and Matthew Tao. We have our podcast, Super Normal. Yes. And it's about making all of this crazy spiritual stuff that we just literally talked about. That's like, what do you, what, huh? <laughs> um Make you, and it's also to make you feel more normal because I feel like as we go through this spiritual journey, we feel weird yeah. and we, yeah. we feel like, what, am I the only one who thinks this weird shit? And we just wanted to make it normal and we wanted to make it funny. I've seen some um, clips and, it, and I'm excited. To, I'm excited yeah, too. Dive in. That's like <laughs> similar to our thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a blast. We're, we're, we're loving making the episodes, but the episode that just came out is on past lives and we talk about the okay. current thing and all of that. So like, Oh, perfect. A little bit of what we just talked about kind of 
we, we, we chat about it in, in an episode that we just did. You're not oh, we're gonna, we, we've Super got normal like podcast. Go catch it. <laughs> yeah. You know, another way I, I've heard it described recently is that like, you know, let, let's use the metaphor of like a computer. We are living on the desktop. You know, you can operate on the desktop and have all your focus on the desktop. And you can still do things with the computer. But like those are programs that go deeper and it eventually gets down to ones and zeros. Mm. If you decide to go a little deeper to the operating system. <laughs> Mm-hmm. so i'm not a computer person either you so. know what a desktop know, is I'm just kidding so like yeah i get it yeah okay. yeah which i thought that was pretty yeah a fun way of thinking about I it like too. that okay. it's it's the it's the almost like going like focusing very finely in and then focusing out like there's it's kind of like i said there's not a this or that it's like this and that yeah it's like so much going on at once and that's why i don't know you know it, being very flexible in everything that we try to understand from our spiritual lens is so important because our simple, sweet little human brains just, they, and our egos get involved and it gets like the whole thing that we want to try to understand things and be right. That the more flexible that we can be in trying to understand these very complex spiritual topics, the better and I always say the more that I understand about spirituality, the more I understand I know shit yeah. about anything. <laughs> so having some humbleness about how we're going to approach or um, learn and be able to like let go of like, I thought I understood that. Maybe I don't. Mm. And be able to put down what no longer resonates with us as we as we go. The fun thing about all of this. And I'm sure I've said this before about all of these conversations and all this, this, you know, acquired knowledge and even the knowledge that you don't know shit is like the world is so much more fun than and interesting than, than a lot of people give it credit for. Yeah. This is, (laughs) this is bananas. This is bananas. And I'm all in like, (laughs) I don't know. True. Be careful what you ask for, because 2024 has been freaking weird thus oh, far. So I agree, and I got. <laughs> She's I, like, you want to get more weird? <laughs> I have weird. I have weird. Uh, I don't know. There's so much going on, like you said, but I feel intuitively strange about next year. I don't know. It's I don't know, but we'll see. It could be. Could be good. Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> Listen, I, I, again, like I've I've heard that we're in a period of like, and I'm sure every generation has said this in the past. But I've I've heard that we're in a in a in a chaos period and and for things to get better, they must kind of fall apart first. So, yep. So here we go. (laughs) We're we're in the tower card. I was going to say tower. Oh, my God. I just pulled the tower card upside down. You did the other day. And I was like, okay, let's Um, go. (laughs) Also, really quick, while we're on the topic of tarot for one second, when you were talking about how. the the spirit was talking about like making you know making sure you focus on creating memories and that you don't need things and um i just recently pulled my last card pull for tarot was the 10 of pentacles and i feel like that's the card that's i i kind of love it. i want to get it tattooed on me or something i don't have a single tattoo but mm-hmm. that might be the one because i was i asked specifically about how to how to make how to make the best decision for myself moving forward since i have so many different sources of I don't want to say wisdom because I don't want to admit, I don't want to think I'm I think myself wise, but I have so many different sources of uh, uh, motivation that I can pull and make a decision from. Um, I was thinking, how do I how do I move forward? And, and, you know, in a way that helps my soul's journey. And I pulled that card. I'm like, damn it. That's the coolest thing to pull because it helps you like take the perspective of like your future self. And what what are you going to be proud of to look back on? What kind of challenges did you get yourself into and got yourself out of that that was going to be mm-hmm. worthy of hanging a banner or a poster or a photograph on, uh, on your wall of that event and i don't know that's that's a big deal for me personally i, I was pretty excited to pull that so yeah making decisions based on hit. what kind of memory you're creating yeah. or what feels like a great experience that kind of thing yeah and it's interesting because obviously you know we see the ten of pentacles as you know there's coins there's all over it right but that's it's about earthly. It's about family. It can be a lot of be a, about a lot of different things. But depending on your depiction, you know which deck you're pulling from. A lot of times, there's family, is what you see on the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, it's not this big fancy house. It's not the 
this shiny car that you see in the Ten of Pentacles. It's it's a celebration or it's it's showing generations or it's showing family showing up in that card. And I always think of either the Ten of Cups or the Ten of Pentacles as my happy ending cards <laughs> in yeah. the tarot. Yeah. Of you did a good job. Be proud of how far you've come. Right. Yeah. Right. It's funny in the Ten of Pentacles, the, the pentacles themselves were it's almost like it wasn't the focus. But, but yeah. I, I kind of, I kind of in that, for that question, I took it to mean like, it's going to be okay. Like you're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, you're you going to sit you, there and pet your dog pet, and pet the dog. Look we're, at your family. Have we're using nice Rider time. weight. Um, <laughs> 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 but like, yeah, I, I, I did enjoy that, that pull. And I think I'm going to hold on to that for a while. And also in connection with that, her, the, the theme of, of what spirit has told you. Oh yeah. Creating memories. And I kind of want to keep that just, yeah, I no, see that, your note that says things suck. Things suck. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, boil down Dana's words into things suck. Uh, look, I'm right. That wasn't meant to be read out loud, but yes. <laughs> things suck with Dana Willie. <laughs> yeah. Your third podcast. <laughs> yeah. You have time. Or my art film. Like whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I want to ask you a question. Because you have spoken a few times about how um, you, you've connected with your guides and they've really helped develop you. I'm so guide jealous. I <laughs> and and to be fair, like you, since we've spoken to uh, Michael Mayo, I have done a few sitting in the power exercises with myself. Not not as many as I want to, but like when I do sit down to like meditate or something, that's what I'm going for, and it's pretty cool. I like it. In fact, the first time I did it, I really felt like my body turned off. I, I, I lean towards my experience. I lean towards, um, kind of out of body astral projection kind of stuff. But, um, that felt like the closest I've gotten to that consciously in a while, and especially just sitting mm -hmm. in a chair. I'm like, I can't move my arms. This is a great first <laughs> yeah. step. What was the most beneficial thing that you practice to get into a position where you can actually like meet and interface with your guides? So it's, a lifelong journey. I know I, we're getting so sick of talking about the journey, but it really is. I think everything with this is a lifelong journey. And I think that there, I, I am so glad that you said the whole guide jealousy thing, because I think that is such a real conversation to have, because when a lot of people talk about their guides, you know, you hear somebody's like, my guide's name is Joe Sonic. Yeah. He wears a yeah. fedora and he is sassy and he tells me exactly that I should eat this and this and this. And he's like, my, he's in my ear talking to me all day long. Like, I think that's a, that's a bar that's too far for people to expect to have that kind of relationship with their guide. Okay. Um, and the, I'm not saying that that's not possible. Sure, yeah. I don't believe that you should limit the limitless. Like, Maybe, maybe that's what your guide relationship's going to be. Um, going back to being flexible and being open that it doesn't have to fit some sort of paradigm. I love that you're doing sitting in the power because that is starting to make you very sensitive. Clairsentience, um, feeling, clear feeling is one of the best things that we can do to simply become aware of when something is changed, what has shifted, what has changed. So when we go into that altered mind state, when we've gone into that passive receptive state of mind, what has changed if we, if we welcome a guide in to work with us and we feel something is shifted and changed, what is that? And it doesn't have to be this profound thing where it's like, oh my God, he's here. <laughs> it can just simply be like, I feel something, maybe a little, little bit of density on my right side of my face. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit of chills, or maybe I just simply saw the color yellow for a brief moment. We're just not being becoming invested in anything coming in. We're just simply noticing any soft, subtle shifts and changes. For me, when I started to do this, the first thing that was coming forward to me was the color purple. It was this purpley mist. And I was like, cool. Cause I just asked to meet my guides in meditation and I could feel that the room shifted and changed a little bit. And I could just like, it just feels like somebody's here. It just felt like somebody was in the room. Like if 
Lauren's in the corner of the room, Frank, but you can't see her. You can kind of feel that she's there, right? Like it kind of feels like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's how I would describe it. And then I just saw the color purple and I saw this purple mist. And so for my first time with my guide, that's what it was. And I just built upon that. And that took a really long time of like your purple mist. And then he changed into something else. And then he changed into something else. And it's because my active mind, my imagination got involved in it a little bit. I'm not mad at that for your guide. Like if you want to give your guide a name because it helps you, you can certainly ask why you're doing a guide meditation or something like that. We have one on our YouTube channel that you can try. But, you know, if you ask your guide for a name, and they give you one, cool. Most guides won't, but if your guide gives your name, cool. If you want to name him or her or it, name him whatever you want. Sometimes giving it something tangible to reach out to. For me, even just having the color purple was nice for a while. It was like, oh, okay, color purple's coming in. And, and I do feel that same kind of awareness that somebody's here. And then it built into something different. And then it it built into something stronger and it had a stronger signature. The more I sat with that energy of like, okay, now I know it's here. Now I know it's here. So to a long point of then I was starting to notice the changes in the way that I was thinking. So we all have that voice inside of our head that beats ourselves up of like, you need to do laundry. (laughs) Um, You look fat in those jeans who do you think you are? You're not 18 anymore, right? (laughs) That's not our guides. Our guides, um, or it typically is like, I feel fat or I shouldn't eat that or I should do laundry. It's usually an I pronoun that we notice. I I did that wrong. Um, It's usually an I pronoun. Like I, I was, I shouldn't have said that, that we all have that voice in our head. Yeah. What you might notice is you do have another voice in your head. And this voice doesn't, isn't mean to you. This voice is very encouraging. Um, It's usually curt and to the point of like, turn here where you wouldn't normally have turned there. Maybe it's a little inspirational, like, like get out of the way or whatever. And you're just like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. Um, Or it's like, um, you should apply for this job. Okay. Just like helpful little tidbits of inspirational or you're loved. Okay. Well, okay. Where did that come from? Yeah. And it feels very different than that, that I voice that comes in. And it typically has a you pronoun voice, or it's very like very fast and very to the point. And then I started to notice that voice was with me, has been with me my whole life. Mm-hmm. And when I started to pay attention to when that voice came in, I was like, oh, that's you. <laughs> and I can start to kind of connect the two. Yeah. Um, I call it my shower time. Like, I don't have, I mean, I have shower time. Like, we all have, you know, shower time. But, like, I have my shower time with my guides where I, it's just a very um, open and receptive time for me to just be like, what do you want to say t- say to me? And I just kind of go into this passive receptive state. You can do this whenever you want, but shower time is a good a time, time for that though. Yeah. There's like a, isn't there it a is. Reddit called shower thoughts? Cause you're yeah, a little more open to, or yeah, is I it think just, stu- more just stupid, kind of stupid stuff? stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, like just the isolation and you kind of enter like a, a minor meditative state when you're showering, you're just in there mm-hmm. kind of chilling for a minute. Yeah. Like you're not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I've gotten a lot of amazing what we would call downloads, I guess, in those moments. Um, So it's been that. And then I would say the third thing for me that's been really helpful, um, and this is like far down the trough for many people, is is developing my trans mediumship. Um, That's because I I actually in that space blend with my guides. Um, And so it's it's far more intense of a blending. I mean, when we're sitting in the power, when we're doing some of these other meditations where there is a blend, um, but when we are in a trance um, state, it's a far deeper surrender with our guides. So um, you just get to know them a little bit better. So mm. 
through developing my trans mediumship. That's, I feel like I know, I know exactly who they are a lot deeper now than I have forever. So, and I'm still, I'm like, that's who you, the whole time that's who you were. <laughs> you actually do to wear them, a fedora? So. Your goatee. The whole, is. It, yeah. <laughs> I've been so, calling you Brian. But, <laughs> it's Bradley. Yeah. That's that was close. It was a BR. It was so close. Oh man. <laughs> so um, let go of like the need for it to be something. I think that's the biggest thing when we want to develop our psychism, our mediumship, or like even like connect with our guides. We have so much like it has to look a certain way because we see everybody on TV doing it, or we see our peers like, I talked to my guide and I had this experience. Like, let that go. That doesn't have to be your experience. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're referring to guide singular. Is that your like lead guide? Cause I've, or is that, Oh, I have guides. Okay. Yeah. Guides. I have with a Z. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's only yeah, talking I, about they, Brian. They like this. to be, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> they like to be what? It's Brian's with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Last question of all the things that you've done to help develop your, uh, your mediumship and your psychic abilities. What, what's the thing that everyone should be doing? Getting to know who the fuck they are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You can't know what spirit feels like, what's shifted and changed in the room until you start to know who you are, to know what you feel like. And, you know, we say this a lot at Matt and Dana. Um, we can teach you the foundations and and all of that of mediumship pretty quick and pretty easy. But doesn't mean anything if you have, if you don't spend any time on you and right. know what you feel like. And, you know, I know we've talked a little bit about sitting in the power, but the first part of sitting in the power is sitting in your own energy. And there, I, I really truly feel um, when the spirit world handed down the idea of sitting in the power that they were so smart in making us sit in our own energy and making us work on our personal development and understanding like where do i need to heal what do i need to work on for myself to show up as authentically as possible and i think that's the goal over everything it's also to know that we are always developing we're always growing i think um the best mediums that are out there have a a mind for continuing to learn, to grow. They're not closed-minded um, to continue just to be open to what is possible. Um, I think that's, that's, that's the goal. And also not to, um, I, you said one thing. No, no, this I is good. Keep going. <laughs> um, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Yeah. It, I think we spend so much time saying, I'm not as good as so-and-so. I'm not as good at so-and-so. I should be doing it this way. It should feel this way. Lean on your own experiences, what you, what you're going through. You're going through what you're going through for a reason, even a difficult reading, even if you are in a development space and maybe you had a rough go of it in that class or in that circle. I always look at those as opportunities, not as mistakes or that you did a bad job. I look at those as opportunities. I don't know. It goes back to what we were talking about, even with when difficult times happen. Did it happen to you or for you? And how can you grow from it? Um, some, sometimes those things are placed in our, in our way so that we can learn and grow from them. So that's we're on a journey. We're human people doing spiritual shit. And we always have to remember that we're here to be human first and foremost. Um, I think we put such a, when we go on a spiritual journey, that sometimes we do it as a form of escapism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of, you know, we, we don't want to feel the heaviness of what we experience on here on earth. We were struggling with grief. Maybe a lot of people came to this through trauma and through a lot of difficult stuff. So we, we run to spirituality, maybe for answers, but also to run away from the stuff here, but we're meant to be here. We're here for a reason. So 
I don't know how that's, if yeah. that no, answered great. your question or if I threw you twenty thousand extra things. <laughs> no, I go. love it. <laughs> I mean that the paying attention to and developing your spirituality and your intuitive abilities for a very short time, like practice some of the like basic tenets of like Buddhism. And I found that to be kind of escapism just a little bit because it was so hard to integrate this. That was Mm -hmm. in my early twenties this time around. It very much feels like, Oh, I'm leaning into the human experience, but I'm going deeper. And that's where like the true spirituality comes from, comes from and how things can speak through you in, in a way. And then also like what you said about knowing what, who you are and and what you feel like. Our last guest said the same thing. Uh, she's Katie Marie from everything aligns. She was talking about like knowing what's in your like scope of, of how you feel. And, and, and to your point, going back to what you're saying about meeting your guides, if, you know, if, if all of this is so subtle initially and how are you, how are you supposed to recognize when your guides are present? If you don't know, if you're not able to make the division between what's them and what's you, because I'm sure there is overlap in that too. And we've all learned to like, just be accustomed to feeling what they are sharing with us, but having that. They've, they've been with us our whole life. Right. So yeah. We're used to having them around. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, I think that's huge. I think that's huge. That's all great. Dana, Willie, <laughs> tell us where people can find you. Give us websites, give us handles. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm at Dana Willie Wu on every social media platform. You can book private sittings with me at DanaWillie.com. That's W-I-L-L-E-Y.com. Uh, you can book development circles and classes and all of that at MattAndDana.com. That's M-A-T. He only has one T in one his name. One T. Okay. Um, I know. He's weird. <laughs> weirdo. Um, he's not here to defend himself, so I can say whatever That's I want about him. That's when you take him. advantage, yeah. Um, yeah. We have, uh, I have so much to promote. Um, we have our Super Normal podcast, and that's with Megan Elisa, Matthew Tao, and myself. And that's about all spiritual topics. We're going to have crazy guests and all kinds of fun stuff there. And then Matthew and I have another podcast called I'm a Medium Ask Me How, which is solely focused on mediumship. So I think that's it. Awesome. Well, Yay. thank you thank so you. much for spending so much time with us. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we took so <laughs> much of it. <laughs> I hope it's worth some. So, so it's, it's worth oh, all. yeah. It's been amazing. I loved hanging out with you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Visit www.clairvoyaging.com for show notes, merch, or just to say hi. If you'd like to support our journey, visit www.buymeacoffee.com backslash clairvoyaging. This has been a production of Wayfeather Media.